Now, this uh, weirdly colored emu that is on my painting palette is, it's now totally dry. It's been a few days, and I just, I can't believe how different this was, but I love this style. I just, I really do, and I want to keep going with it. And this time, I'm not just trying to be joking about it, because this was a failed April Fool's joke. No, I want to, I want to really dive in and experiment with this style some more. And I thought the best way to do that is paint my dog, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> so I'm going to give that a go now, because of course the whole aspect of this style that I love about it is that it's like super laid back, casual, there's not really much to it. So if I'm painting my ridiculous dog, that might be a good way to keep that style going. So I'm going to give it a go. And we will see how it goes on this canvas. Here goes nothing. stoked with how this painting turned out. The whole time I'm painting my dog Willis, who is an adorable golden retriever, and that kind of actually raises the stakes a little bit because if I make a mistake, we all can tell. Uh, me and my parents will notice every little flaw in it because it's not like painting anything else where we're kind of like, eh, it may or may not be correct. So I kind of gave him a squashed head in the beginning, uh, made his eye too small, made his nose too long, gave him too small of an ear. But ultimately, I, I loved doing it and it was so fun because, you know, he's, he's my dog. And a funny coincidence is, at the end, I put, I put this canvas up next to him. And it turns out his head in real life is literally like exactly the same size as the uh, as the painting of him was. So I thought that was pretty cool that I accidentally kind of made like a exact replica of him size wise. And from the beginning, two problems kind of emerged. The first was I made his ear way too small. And the second, more pressing issue was his nose was way too long. And yeah, looking at it, like for most people, you probably won't be able to tell that something's wrong. But for me, after, you know, being with him for six years, I noticed it and I was like, oh my gosh, his nose is too long. And so I had to fix that. But the first thing I had to do was I actually had to wipe down his nose, say nope to the paint, and that way, the reason the reason that I did that is because if I were to try and paint the, his, uh, if I were to try and paint over his snout before, then there would be quite a bit of texture left over from the paint, and I had to wipe it down so that none of that texture showed through the white paint that I used to cover it up. And then he looked super weird when I still had like my sketch on it, but oh well, I fixed it later. Had to also enlarge in his ear, because yeah, it was too small. Not much of a change there though. Once I fixed the nose, he looked way better, so I was just going to be happy about that. Now the whole kind of premise behind this style that I've been just loving doing is kind of built on, like Bob Ross would say, happy little accidents. And more, not just being okay with accidents, but actually
actually embracing it. And this is all about the color mixture that I use. So when I'm painting, I have a picture on my phone that I'm going off of. And yes, it was really hard to get him to pose for this picture, but eventually I got it. And of course, no one can mix the perfect color with their paint palette. And especially me, I still somehow manage to grossly um, mess up some of my colors when I'm mixing. And so what I do is I try to get the most accurate colors I can, but inevitably make some mistakes. Then with my second layer, which I'm doing right now, I see some of those slightly off color tones that I use and I go, all right, now I want to embrace it and exaggerate it. I want to make an even more kind of like a, a richer, more vibrant version of that color. Also, I had to fix his eye because it looked like Darth Vader's eye socket. Wait, uh, no, Darth Vader didn't have eye sockets. He had just like black holes in his helmet. But anyways, he looked like a sinister evil dog. I also had to fix up the uh, coat of paint that I used to cover up where his original nose was. And I always knew that there would have to be two layers of paint to make an opaque uh, covering, especially in this case because it's white over a very dark surface. So you need more of it in order to cover it up. And then, yep, just added in some whiskers, and that was it. The whiskers ruined it. I, I really do think that the whiskers ruined it. You can't really see it on the video, but yeah, they're, they're just too big, and I'm too lazy to fix it. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, that's what it's going to end on. And, and I do think it has a kind of a cool effect, but maybe that's just me trying to justify not doing any more work. So I guess all that's left is to sign it. But, oh well, you live and you learn, and this is a clear example of where if I had just left it as it was, it would have been great. I love this painting. It's so nice. But, yeah, the... The whiskers just, uh, hmm. it didn't seem to want to go along with it. <laughs>